You know, before cartoons were on TV 24 hours a day like they are today, they used to only be on TV for about an hour after school, Monday through Friday, and then a few hours on Saturday morning. And I remember being the oldest of three boys, we lived for Saturday morning to watch our favorite cartoons, hair all messed up, you know, in our pajamas, eating a big bowl of cereal. Saturday morning cartoons, watching our favorite characters. Now, I have a question for you. Who is your all-time favorite cartoon character? Who is that for you? Think about that. Who is that for you? Is there one that comes to mind? Well, I did a little scientific experiment this week with the help of our clerk of session, and we did a poll of our elders here at Chapel by the Sea asking them who their all-time favorite cartoon character is. Would you like to hear the results? <laughs> well, let's see here. Don Cady, Ron Buss, Tree Andre, and Miffy Greer all said Charlie Brown. Elaine Brinkman said Bambi, and then she said Roadrunner. Steve Raps, he said that his all-time favorite was a character by the name of Dilbert. Any of you ever heard of Dilbert? Yeah? Well, he even said that he has a book full of Dilbert stories. Bill Turner. Said his all-time favorite character was Snoopy from Peanuts. Beth Cherry, one of our elders, said it was a tie between Tigger and Roadrunner. Landon Doggett, who just sang up there with his lovely bride, said his was Foghorn Leghorn and Yosemite Sam. And then Dean Southworth, one of our elders, he said that his all-time favorite was Beetle Bailey. Beetle Bailey. Now, for me, I really liked, I liked uh, Yogi Bear. I liked Hulkaberry Hound. But one of my all-time favorite, all favorites was a cartoon, cartoon character by the name of Popeye the Sailor Man. Any of you ever heard of him? Popeye the Sailor Man. How many of you remember Popeye's girlfriend? Her name was, right, do you remember Popeye's arch enemy? His name was? Okay. Do any of you remember the freeloader friend who would say, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today? His name is? Not as many people knew that. And then eventually there was a little baby that would be crawling around all the time, and the baby's name was? Man, nobody knew that one. A few people did. Well, Popeye he has these wonderful characters, but Popeye was also known for having these, these phrases, if you will. He would say, I am what I am, and that's all that I am. You remember that? And occasionally he'd say, well, blow me down. And at the end of the cartoon, he would say, I'm strong to the finish, because I eats me spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Do you remember that? Well, there was one other phrase that Popeye would say in just about every episode. Something would happen that would just tick him off. I mean, he would get so mad, and then when he'd get so mad, he would say these words. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. He would say those words, and about right at that moment, Popeye would pull this large can of spinach out of his shirt and he would bust it open with his hand. Sometime he would use his corncob pipe to open it up and he would squeeze the can and the spinach would go straight up in the air and he would swallow it all in one bite and then he would get like these big supernatural powers, these muscles, and it would, everything would go where? Right to his forearms. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. You know, I think we might even have a video clip of that. Do we have that? I can stand. 
I can't stand no more. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. But seriously, have you ever been a place or at a time in your life when you just couldn't take any more of a really bad situation? I mean, have you ever said to yourself something to the effect, that's all I can stand, I can't stand no more, and that you knew that change had to happen, and it had to be a positive, life-giving change? Well, that's the way that it was for Moses. Here is Moses, as we read from Exodus, the story goes, Moses witnesses the beating of a fellow Hebrew, and then there's something in Moses that just snaps. Something snaps, and he's tired of the status quo. He's tired of the injustice and the oppression and the discrimination. He's tired of seeing his people in slavery. So Moses has a Popeye moment. Maybe he says to himself, Something to the effect of, that's all I can stand, I can't stand no more. Theologically speaking, he was experiencing what theologians have called a holy discontent. A holy discontent. He realized that something powerful was welling up with, inside of him and that change had to occur. And he could no longer say yes to the status quo. So shortly after that, Moses finds himself standing in front of this bush, this burning bush that's not being consumed. And then he hears the voice of God calling out to him, saying, I have seen the people's suffering. You, Moses, I recognize the holy discontent within you. I've heard your call. And now let's do something about it. Let's lead the people out of Egypt, out of slavery, and into freedom. So God recognized Moses' holy discontent. And he used that to bring about something good, something positive. To no longer be content with the way things were. To change the status quo. And we see, my friends, we see... Uh, example after example in Scripture and in our history of people who had that same kind of Popeye moment. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. Something had to change. I think of King David as he battled Goliath. David could no longer stand to be oppressed, intimidated by the Philistines. And so he had that Popeye moment, and a change was made. I think of the prophet Nehemiah. Nehemiah could no longer stand the fact that Jerusalem's walls were destroyed. And so he had that Popeye moment, a moment of holy discontent. And he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. I think historically speaking of Martin Luther King Jr., who could no longer stand the reality that there were not equal opportunities and equal rights for all people, despite race, religion, gender, or creed, or what have you. And so Martin Luther King one day had a Popeye moment. There was a holy discontent that was welling up within him, and God used him in a powerful way. I think of Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa could no longer stand the living conditions in India anymore, and she had a Popeye moment. Holy discontent was welling up within her, and she made it her life's mission to minister to India's poorest of the poor. And now I ask you, as I ask myself, maybe a dangerous question. What is it that makes you say, that's all I can stand, I can't stand no more? What is that? What is your holy discontent. When you look around the world and you see 
in such the world in such bad shape? What is it that begins to well up within you? What is your passion? Sometimes that holy discontent feels like anger. And we might be thinking, well, it's unchristian for Christians to experience anger, right? Wrong. That's wrong. Anger is a natural emotion that God has given to us. It's not really positive. It's not really negative. It's just an emotion. It becomes positive or negative. It becomes constructive or destructive based on how we deal with anger, what we do with it. For example, just earlier I was talking about this hammer with the kids. If a holy discontent rises up within me and I sense maybe some anger within me that things need to change, I could use this hammer for destructive purposes or I could channel that in a way where it's constructive. I could break out windows. I could hurt somebody with this. You could kill somebody with this. But you could also build a house. You can build a house with a hammer. You see, it's just what you do with it. What are you going to do with that holy discontent that is with you? My friends, today we're all called to discover what that is. What is your passion? Look around the world. There are so many needs. Even right here at Chapel by the Sea. My friends, we have plugged in and we support so many mission activities and outreach. Chapel by the Sea is doing a holy and a sacred and a good work in its midst and and in the community. And we need your help. Why? Because you're gifted. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're nine years old or you're 99 years old. Occasionally, every once in a while, In a blue moon, somebody will say to me, you know, Pastor Steve, I've done my time. I'm finished with my service to God. Well, somebody was just telling me earlier this morning that Christians don't retire. Christians don't retire. And you might be saying, well, Pastor Steve, I just don't, I'm not in good health. I I just can't go and build a house for Habitat for Humanity. Well, that's okay. We need your prayers. Pray for us. Pray for our mission here. If you can contribute some of your treasure, then do that. Either way, God has an important work for you today. God has allowed us to have another day on this earth, another breath in our lungs. Why? To serve Him. To make a difference, to change the status quo, to bring light into the darkness. God has called you and me just like he called Moses. I think of the book of Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul is saying the very same thing to the congregations. He's saying you're very gifted and God's got good work for you to do. He says we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance advance for us to do. So God has a job for you. And get excited about that. These are exciting times that that we live in. And we have an opportunity to share the gifts that we have with other people. What's that going to be for you? What is your holy discontent? What is that passion within you that feels almost like a righteous anger? And you want to channel that into something that glorifies God. What is that? In closing, I think of the English philosopher Edmund Burke. He said some very wise words. He says, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. My friends, do nothing.
do something. God has called you. God needs you. What is your Popeye moment? What is your holy discontent? Discover that today. Serve God and be blessed. And God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and merciful God, we come before you, and we are grateful for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray that you have tugged at our hearts, Lord, knowing that there is good work, holy work, sacred work to be done. And you need us all to give what we can, to do what we can, And we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to serve you and to make a difference in the life of another person. Lord, but we know it's not just for others. We serve others, but your word says that when we've done it to the least of these, we've done it unto you. We pray that we would see Jesus Christ in the face and in the life of others. And when they look at us, they see that same Jesus as well. Father, please use us. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen.